we were on Skype room yesterday and um void judgment came up and um Agnesio. Yeah, and these words yeah. have been used. And yeah. there's the man Ab in Ab uh, right from the very beginning. Ab Ab avoid the judgment right Ab 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 right? Uh-huh. Have, would you have you ever used anything like that, or has anybody you know ever used anything like yeah, that? Would you compared use with, something like yeah, that? Yeah, compared with, right. I just said I want to go back to the status and standing I was before I encountered this court. I want to go back to that of being a man. And then one used Latin? And think, and then, no, and then I say to them, I said, I believe that you maintain that position in statute in which you would refer to as ab initio. There you go. So just record whatever I just said and listen to it, and that's the perfect sentence. Well, not perfect, but it's whole and complete. Yes, yeah, so it is perfect, you know. That's how you write it. it. Took me a year to come up with that little stupid ditty. Not only do I believe it's true, but I believe you maintain the statute and within your statutes this position that, and then fill in the blank. It would be referred to as an issue. Not saying that I know, but I believe that you maintain this position in your statute. Not that I know. I'm not saying. I'm saying I believe you maintain this position. I'm not saying it's true. I think you maintain this position. Because your statute is rigid, and I believe this is the second dimension. The first to it is ab initio. A freaking year to come up with that one little sentence, but boy, it works for so many things, it's not even funny. But you just got to minimize everything. That's what I do. I just minimize everything. You know, minimalist, extraordinary. I just, that's the, that's a big German thing. Every, the Germans trying to miniaturize every freaking thing. Get it down to the basic, simplest thing to make it work and still function at the size of a pin of a needle. It's like, wow, you got it to work yet. Damn right, I didn't. We just like to do it. We like to make things simple. If like one that. writes a, a notice and uses Latin and turns it in, and in court the judge possibly gets up and walks out? No, the um, judge could, no, the could, ju- no, no, the judge, what's he, the ju- how, I, mean, so I love telling people all the time, how would you like, oh, we, we used to have an issue. Okay, now how would you like this very learned, very wise, very educated judge to say every single thing in that hearing and trial in Latin? You speak Latin, why can't he speak Latin? Then what are you going to do, smart guy? How are you going to answer him? You're going to be like, I have no idea what you're doing. Yeah, you did. Right here, have an issue. Da, 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 da. Look at all these Latin words you used. I'm going to use them. If you could use them, I could use them. Why are all you allowed to use them? All because you think you want to play. Pretend that you're a smart guy. Pretend that you learn it. Pretend that you studied in Latin. Pretend. Oh, you want to pretend? Yeah, I'll, I'll show you some pretending. Let's pretend. Let's pretend that you don't understand what I have to say. So talk on a common man, common parlance level. Stop talking all uppity. Let, let me put it this way. Some guy got on my show from England. Great, great phone call. The guy said to me, he said, the, the judge said to him in open court, if you want to do this common law procedure, I recommend highly you stick to one syllable words. The judge said that to him. And this is why I keep telling everybody, use one. So if you do it three syllables, try to get it down to two. You get it down to two, try to get it to one. Everything I did, everything I do, I try to make it one syllable. Talk simple. There's no loopholes. There's no way to get out of that word. Keep it one syllable. Simple word like me, Tarzan, you, Jane, Jane, steel, bone, give back bone. That's it. That's my whole freaking claim. That's my whole case. That's my whole freaking everything. Jane can't get out of it. I don't want nothing. Is that my problem? That my that's my bone. Give it back. It's been working since caveman time. It'll work today. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Tarzan did it. It's done. Let's move on. Go enjoy the sunshine. Get away from the two syllable, three syllable words. We got this covered. Thousands of years. You don't have to get creative, and that's what's killing you guys. And they see it when you use two, three syllable words. They know you don't have a freaking clue what you're doing. Oh, you're going to try to talk up to me. Oh, we're word nerds. Oh, you want to cross words with us? Oh, you really? Let's play. Let's have a game. They're going to eat you for lunch. Talk like a man, and they'll know you that told they're meeting a man. How did God do the commandments? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. You know, what did he say? Well, let's be reasonable about this. At times, you know, we could, you know, he didn't, he didn't start using two, three syllable words. Made it simple, made it clear. That's the law. Simple and clear. Not ambiguous. If it's ambiguous, it's not good law. I mean, you could actually Google that. If it's ambiguous, it's not good law. You could actually do a quote unquote if it's ambiguous, it's not good law. And you'll see it's in so many statutes and so many code books all over the world. That's basically general golden rule. 
if you could have more than one interpretation for a word, it's not, it would not make uh, good law. Like if I said to you, what does uh, the word blue mean to you? And why? And what would it mean? Um, I would think color first. Perfect. 99% of the people on earth would think of it means color first. 1 or 2%, you know, let's say 95% think it's a color. 1 or 2% would say, uh, blue, it's a feeling, it's an emotion. Another person would say, blue, you mean like I blew up birthday candles? Another person would say, blue, you mean like, a, you know, a, a, a form of a, uh, American African music that they brought over with them from Africa, they, you know, the, the blues, there's a style of music, you know, blue, you know, what, you know. So like I said, so a good law, if you said the word blue and there was something in there that had to do with color, that would make good law. It would make sense to everybody, 95% of the common poems, the common man, the common law, the people would understand that part. And Algonquin blue means, you know, they say it a different way. They might say it. They might say, um, you know, pish posh might be the word for blue for them. But we wouldn't know what that means, but they know what it means. It's their common term, their common poems, their common law. And when I was talking to Bill Thornton on another guy's show, Bill started to understand what I was trying to say. It's like, Bill, you're doing old English common law for the old English crown legal society, bar association. I said, that's not common law of the Algonquins, of the Welsh people, of the Irish or whoever was over there. I said, it's not the common people, the common terms of art. People didn't know what a trove or a plebe was, I guarantee in merry old England. Only legal lawyers did. It's not common law. It's common law for the bar association. Common law for the crown. That's their common terms. That's their common policy. That's their common words. I said, why are you trying to use it in Los Angeles, California, or Palm Springs? Where? What are you doing? I don't get Orange County, whatever. What are you doing? It doesn't make any sense. Talk simple. 